what's up everybody? In this video, I'm gonna talk about five things to think about when you're trying to decide on whether to get a bait caster or a spinning reel and which one I think is better and superior. So in this video, we're gonna dive into it. I'm not gonna pull any punches. We're gonna have some fun. See you in a minute. I got a Jack. Oh, got oh, Jack's got one on the tree oh, truck. Like this forever. I wanna stay right here with you. I wanna stay right here. Ah! Welcome to my channel, I'm Jack, and this is my channel, Yak Motley. And on this video, I wanna talk about the five big determining factors of when you should use bait casters versus spinning reel. So if you're like me, and you've always wanted, you know, the best spinning reel, and you've looked at all the forums, and you've read all the articles, and you've read everything a marketer could throw at you, but you still just cannot decide, because it's a big deal. You know, when you're trying to pick out the perfect spinning reel, or bait caster, or whatever new fishing reel that you're gonna drop 100, 200 bucks with, and you've, you know, fantasized it in your head that you're gonna have this thing forever. It's a big deal. You can put the best line on it. You can catch all these big fish and you're just sitting there in your bed at night and you're just dreaming and dreaming and dreaming. And you're like, man, I can't wait to get on the water. And then like two weeks later, you're finally deciding to pull the trigger and you're like, well, I'm just gonna, you know, so-and-so on the internet said this one's the best one or that one's the best one. I'm preferable to a spinning reel. Why? Because on the Gulf Coast, there's a lot of wind, there's a lot of sand, and we fish for a lot of different species. And the spinning reel allows you to have a lot more versatile range of what you can do. Now, that being said, I still use bait casters. And I'm gonna tell you the five determining factors of when I use one or the other. So before y'all start like throwing rocks in the comment section and shooting to kill, listen to my top thing because I think they're pretty good and I help you out because you might be sitting there thinking, what do I buy for Christmas or which one do I pick up? I'm a new fisherman like, but everybody says I need this fancy one. So it, I'm gonna break it down Barney style. Well, in my opinion, this whole conversation falls in between about five topics okay so number one when you're trying to figure this whole thing out is can you operate it and how accurate are you at casting and how accurate are you going to need to be okay so bait casters bait casters allow you to thumb and have a little pin port accuracy like when you're trying to get underneath a dock or a lily pad and you might say well you know i want to be one of those high speed pros one of them dudes that can really really just <laughs> roll and martin in or <laughs> build dance it because those dudes always use bait casters but you know, they don't always use bait casters. You just happen to see them on TV with it. Because when you first start out with a bait caster, you're gonna backlash, even on the best braking system. Because you know what? If you're throwing out of a kayak, the water's right here. And when you do that, you hit the water, pff, bird's nest. When you go to do it like this, pff, there's, there's a bunch of rods behind you. Pff, bird's nest, okay? Or you're out there on the beach, you're ready to just throw. You're in your kayak, you fly it. And there's a 20 mile an hour wind coming your way. Pff, bird's nest, you know? So these things can be kind of problematic when you're trying to fish. I promise, like they, they'll get on your nerves. Spinning reel, not a problem. Get a little wind knot, you can see it, good to go. So, thumbing versus spinning reel, category one. I use a spinning reel 99% of the time when I'm trying to deal with operability issues, like what am I gonna be casting? If you're in a boat, center consoles right behind you, it's a dude to your right, you're not on the bow. Sometimes that underhanded roll cast by Kevin Van Dam's hard to pull off. Just saying, if you're not in a big boat. Even if you're trying to cast it around something with, you know, radar units or cables or lines, spinning reel just makes that way more simpler. Operability is what you're shooting for. And that brings me to number two reason to choose one or the other. The bait size, okay? If I'm throwing big baits, jig heads, I'm bottom thumping, lipless crankbaits, I'm going to use probably this one. This is my Abu Garcia Revo SX. I've had them for a few years. I've used them for a lot of big bull reds. I've used them for bass fishing, things like that. Uh, you know, even speckled trout fishing. I, the only, literally, the only lures I put on this rod are humongous lippers crank, crankbaits, lippers crankbaits, something with some weight, uh, big jig heads, um, if I'm bouncing the bottom, or if I'm trying to just not cast in the wind. Like, I personally, um, I, I, I don't look forward to using them half the time, especially I have a kayak. I know the bass fishing are y'all just gonna come unglued, there's gonna be darts flying everywhere, and it's gonna be a live fire area. But, I think that in this category, the bait caster is overrated. I think the marketers just got a hold of this thing, and you hardly see any bait casters on a charter boat fisherman's 
boat. Why? Because they're hard to use and not, they're not for the novice. Like it takes a while to learn how to use these things. So if you're just getting into the sport, spinning reels will save you a lot of trouble. Um, and, and in the, the bait section, you can use them for finesse fishing, spinning reels, you know, you can, with braided line change the whole game, in my opinion, change the whole game. Why? Because with braided line, you can put heavier line on a smaller, like spinning reel, and it allows you to finesse fish and still catch some big fish. 3000 series reel on the Gulf Coast, we catch 40 inch bull reds, 30 pounds. We catch uh, king mackerel, you can catch just about anything on a 3000 series reel. Why? Because you can put 30 pound braid and a lot of it on a little spinning reel. And you can usually lasso just about everything. And if that's not enough, you can just bump it up to a 5,000. You can catch just about anything. Trust me. The big difference was when Mono and Braid went and Braid just took over the world and you don't have to have that big bait caster with some heavy line anymore. I think I'm rambling on this subject, so let's move to number three. And I kind of touched on number three and it's casting space. Like when you're in a, a kayak or you're on a boat and you're trying to cast like this, you know, you're, you're 12 to six here gotta have some room behind you. If you're trying to go this way, you gotta have some room this way. So if you're gonna be fishing in tight spaces and you're not on the front up there with a trolling motor, it's pretty tough to use one of these. And there's a reason why a lot, there's, these aren't on like offshore fishermen's boats because there's not a lot of room. You either have a conventional for dropping straight down and straight up with a ton of line and roping something really big with a big winch uh, gear ratio or you're using a spinning reel because you can just flip, you can toss, you're not gonna backlash, you see the fish, it's, you're jumping on top of it, you're making quick casts, and, you, and if you backlash, fish is gone. He's here and gone. He's here and gone. So keep that in mind. What kind of boat? Are you gonna be on the beach? Is it gonna be sandy? Sand in this? Sand in this does not match, okay? I tried, and I got sand all in the gear ratio, and it was, I had to completely take the entire thing down and try to fix it. So. Fishing on the beach, I'm not using this. I don't care what anybody says. I'm not taking it. I'm not taking my $150 reel and getting sand in it. Just saying. Y'all gonna throw darts at me about that one too. Bring it, baby. Bring it. So to draw this thing all out, we're gonna say number five is the randomness of fishing, right? That's sand, wind, water, environmental issues, and expense. If you're going to, I think that'll be it. Expense. Yeah, that's it. Expense. Because this puppy, a good one's gonna cost you 150 bucks. With us, even with some of us that have been fishing a long time have done a lot of casting operating a bait caster can be pretty tough if you're in a kayak it's tough because everything's behind you, you got a bunch of poles right back here and you're like well you know i, I, I can't underhand roll cast because i hit the water right there and if i'm in a boat there's a bunch of stuff standing around there's a dude to your left there's a dude to your right there's a you know a, a rod holder behind you a center console or you know it might be you know unless you're on the front up there with a trolling motor sometimes that little roll cast the bait caster even the over the top can be tough. You can do a lot of casting with this $150 one is eh, limping in at five years, okay? And I've done a lot of fishing with it. And all that's a $150 reel. But I can go get a fierce two or a battle for half the price, spinning reel, put some 20, 30 pound braid on there, go out there and catch lunkers and faces like all day and it's still gonna survive. So let me tell you something when you're trying to buy an expensive reel. One, somebody's either gonna steal that son of a gun, or two, you're gonna lose it, or three, you're gonna break it before it dies most of the time, okay? That's me. If you're a kayak fisherman, you're gonna roll. You're probably gonna lose a rod. If you're a boat fisherman, you're probably gonna be eating that peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you're gonna get that big hit, and that thing's going off the boat anyways. So just don't think you're not gonna lose stuff, or if you just got it in the back of the truck and you went to get that beer from the gas station and all of a sudden it's gone. That happens too. So when you're thinking about these reels, one, the marketers have gone way out of control. Just about everything you read online that's not like a, an independent person is to sell a product. Same way with fishing lures and because I'm literally literally I'm gonna do a video on this because I in the last year I've seen fish caught on Twizzlers you know bass on Twizzlers I've seen Brent catch bull reds 40 inch bull reds on Rice Krispie treats on a jig head I've caught bluefish on bear hooks and tarpon on wire leaders with no fluorocarbon so you tell me how much the marketer is really into fishing I'm trying to save you guys a few bucks and trying to just have a little fun with fishing because we way overthink this stuff just go buy you a 50 60 dollar spinning reel spin that thing up go fishing 
maybe get you two of them for the price of this one, you'll be much happier. But there's a time and a place. Time and place for spinning reels and for bait casters. And there's really more of a time for one than the other. And that is why spinning reels are better than bait casters because they're more versatile. You don't have to worry about thumb in the spool and you can use them on a lot of different species and a lot of different water on a lot of different boats and a lot of different kayaks and it's just mind blowing. And that's my thought on that. See you guys later. Comment, comment down below with what you use. Throw some rocks at me about bait casters. Th throw some rocks. All you bass fishermen, throw some rocks. We're going to have fun. See you later.